What's up everybody, I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. Today on the channel, we're going to be talking about maintaining and repairing your gear so that it has a long lasting life. I've got a whole bunch of problems here. I've got a pad that doesn't hold air anymore. I've got rain jackets that don't repel rain anymore. I've got backpacks that have sprung leaks in them, if you will, thanks to the camera guy behind you. Uh, and down jackets that are losing their insulation. What do we do about it? Let's break it down, starting now. Okay, my uh, camera guy is yelling at me here because this jacket likes to make a lot of noise on my microphone. We are going to be talking about how to patch and fix and repair a plethora of items. So first up, uh, actually I just covered the first up. First up, we've got rain jackets that no longer hold their water repellency. And uh, I'm gonna get this started right now because the first step to maintaining it is actually to wash it. So while we're doing the rest of this video, I'm going to throw this in the wash with some Nick Wax Tech Wash. That's just gonna get off all the old dirt, old debris and stuff to kind of re-vibrant up the jackets. And then we are also going to apply some waterproofing finish because you don't just have to get a new jacket every time uh, a jacket loses its, its water repellency. That's natural, it happens. It's a symptom of old age with gear and that's okay, everybody. There is a solution. There is medical help that can be had. Okay, so take a quick break. I'm gonna throw these in the wash and we'll get back right to it. So gear breaks down over time. That's just natural. I just went on a really rough and tumble backpacking trip through Canyon Country. And uh, this was actually the backpack that I lent my camera guy. Um, and he decided to put his tripod right here. Um, which meant that as we were scrambling through canyons, we got a ton of holes in this. So this, in my opinion, would not be a failure of the backpack. This was just uh, abrasions and stuff wearing down, especially the main mistake here is having something hard underneath uh, a piece of fabric that's exposed and gonna get rubbed a bunch. So if there was so a soft good in here, this would not have developed the holes like it has. However, we're still gonna look at patching some of these up to making sure that this uh, doesn't lose gear that's stored in here. Um, other gear that's, you know, I've got a really nice, one of my favorite jackets is this ultralight down jacket. It's a super warm jacket, but just down jackets, they, if they catch something, this actually happened because my dog was super excited and jumped up on me this morning, this morning, literally, uh, because we have a snowstorm out here. And uh, he's just so, so, such a happy little puppy. And uh, yeah, so he put his nail through this and now I'm losing my down, losing my insulation. So we're gonna also look at how to patch that up. And then my sleeping mat here, again, uh, my cameraman. <laughs> you know, he uses it for one night, one night, folks. Puts a hole in it. But no, uh, this just happens also. So this is also different than a manufacturer's defect. This got a pinprick hole in it, and that is super easy to fix. The biggest problem with that is just finding the hole. Um, and if you can do that, we'll also get into that. That's the layout here. That's some of the problems that we're gonna address. Let's start by, uh, well, let's start, let's stuff this guy back in. Oh, you, you, you're trying to escape too. Nope, gotta keep my downfill insulation in there. So first thing up, we're gonna replace, we're gonna repair this down jacket. So this has kind of an L tear in it. So I'm gonna need a patch that's gonna go in a circle or kind of a rounded square uh, around that. And I've got a couple of items here that are gonna handle that. Okay, so there's a handful of things that we can do to, to fix this. I, I have with me, uh, something that I like to use, it's called Tear Aid Patch. Uh, this is type A. Uh, type B is good for uh, things like vinyl, which would be good for boats, pack rafts, uh, things that need to hold air at pressure, um, and just vinyl, basically. But this is basically for almost everything else. And it's flexible, it's see-through, so I can kind of apply it onto any color, and it's gonna hold up. Um, I do have some other materials here as well. Um, you know, you've got your 3M patches, you've got gear aid, you've got no-sew patches. This is like a, 
a 3M fabric repair, but this was for like a specific hammock actually, so uh, that color is not gonna do. Um, there's also, a lot of them are clear. There's some of them that are kind of cool designs, like you know, you've got like bears and penguins and fun stuff like that if you wanna play around with them. I'm familiar with Gear Aid and No So. Um, I like those as well, so those are handy to use. Uh, tenacious tape is a great thing, and you can just get like a roll of tenacious tape, and you can apply it to a whole bunch of things. But for right now, I'm going to, I like to have something like this with me, um, and then I'll just cut it up and uh, apply the patch right over, knee, over top. So one thing is just to make sure that it's clean. Uh, like this backpack is super dirty, so I'm gonna wanna clean that up before I actually try to ap apply anything. And then uh, this already, I think it's good. What I'm gonna do is cut a hole or cut a uh, rounded square and uh, put that over top. Just realized I left my scissors somewhere else. We'll come back. Okay, so I was gonna just cut out uh, a bigger, a, a big piece. But I just found in my little uh, kit, uh, one of these that I still have, that is just a really nice, clean uh, square. Oh, oh, hello. Hello, my friend. Come, stay with me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit. I've got, um, I've got some little extra kind of fibery things that I just kind of want to get rid of and make sure that this just has a, Nice clean surface to stick to. I think that'll do. I'm gonna take my Type A tear aid patch. I'll try to keep my fingerprints off of it as much as possible. Delicately place. Want everything to lay as flat as possible. Cool. Just kind of work that in a little bit. Now, the aesthetics are going to be uh, a little bit compromised, unfortunately, but you'll also just kind of look like you've been doing this for a while and you just have holes and patches and all sorts of stuff. So it kind of will increase your street cred. Okay, I did an okay job. Not my finest work, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I've got a little bit of some down feathers that are kind of visible there, which I kind of wish I could have gotten that seam a little bit better. The tricky thing is that I just had this L-shaped cut. Um, so that thing wanted to shift around a little bit. So if it's just a straight slice, that's actually quite a bit easier to handle. Um, but still, this will now stop losing its downfill and this thing will have a much longer happy life. So uh, that one is pretty good. Kinda wish I'd done a slightly better job, but hey, uh, it is what it is. It's outdoor gear, it's backpacking gear. Not always gonna be the prettiest. Now it's got some scars. I'm gonna save this for just a second. Uh, I'm gonna get into this. And actually, I wanna bring up the fact that Mystery Ranch is sponsoring this video. I wanna give them a shout out and a thank you. I've been using Mystery Ranch bags for a long time and I love them. They are super durable backpacks. And I took them into some of the most rugged conditions I've ever asked of a backpack. And it came away with a few scars too. So uh, without further ado, let's get into how to uh, fix these holes. So Mystery Ranch, gear companies in general, lots of companies, they have warranty departments. They have ways that if this was like a total disaster of, of a thing going on, I would contact Mystery Ranch or I would contact whoever the gear maker is and ask for a, a warranty or some sort of repair. Sometimes it's just you send it off and for a small fee or the cost of shipping, depends on the company involved, they will fix it for you and send it back. So this is something that people don't necessarily know about. A lot of these companies, they do wanna fix your gear. They don't just want you to just buy the next generation of stuff. Um, because sending this to the landfill over a couple of holes or a, a zipper that's malfunctioning or something like that um, is not necessary. And a lot of these gear companies are at least savvy enough and environmentally conscious enough to know that 
repairing a piece of gear is much better than uh, just having you buy a new one. So if it is a complicated repair, I would recommend whatever the thing is, whether it's a tent, a backpack, a sleeping bag, whatever it might be, uh, reach out to the company and ask for help with it. But if it's just like small stuff like this, um, well, let's get into actually repairing it. I think what I actually might do for these is try to repair it from the inside. Uh, I think that that'll look a little cleaner and maybe be a little bit nicer than repairing it from the outside. And then also, if I need to add a second layer, I could put another patch on the outside there. So the first step is going to be to clean it um, and so that this will get a good uh, adhesion. Uh, this just came out of the desert and so there is some uh, dirt and grunge and grime. So I'm just going to see if I can get a clean up with some alcohol pads here. There's a, there's a few abrasions in here, that's for sure. Nice and dirty. Ooh. Okay. Give that just a quick second to dry out. Here's where I'm going to use my bigger guy. Probably going to put a pretty good sized patch on the inside. Just cover all of that. And try to round off some of these corners. So those will be more likely to peel up. Okay. Try to keep my fingerprints on this to a minimum. That's doing pretty good. Let's see if we can get this, this guy. I'm going to switch over. This is my gear aid patch. Uh, so I like have in some of these circles and uh, that looks like a pretty good, perfect little size there for it. So I'm going to slip over to giving gear aid some love. Let's see how that goes. Nice and easy there like that. Try to get flat. Okay. That one went really nice. That one looks good. That one went even better. So the nice thing about doing it on the inside is uh, it's just less visible. So even though you can still see the abrasions and whatnot, um, just going to probably keep things looking a little nicer. So that's all good. Okay. So other things that might go wrong with a backpack, not just mystery range bags, but any backpack, having zippers fail, um, buckles breaking, going to your local REI or something like that, you can buy replacement buckles that, uh, that you can then just add on here if you do happen to have something that busts. Um, zippers are often tough to fix. So that might be something that I would contact the company about and see if they can fix it for you. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's patched. Love it. One of the next most common problems is leaking air pads. Now, air pads are awesome. They're super comfortable, but they do develop holes. And so I have identified the leak. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But first, what I want to do is just re-inflate this to the max, and uh, then we'll go from there. So now that this is inflated up again, we can try to find the problem, which happens to be over here on this side. It's just the tiniest little bit of air coming out. But over three or four hours, what that means is you're going to lay and you're going to find yourself, this is going to deflate, you're going to find yourself on the ground. It's going to be cold and uncomfortable, uh, and that's no good. So if that's happening to you, what I'll do is 
Certainly I want to look for any pinholes, tip, uh, tears, rips, anything like that. I'll look at the seams to see if there's any issues with the seams. Maybe something has come apart. Uh, and also at the nozzle, see if there's any leaks at the nozzle. Um, finding pinholes can be really, really difficult. So I had to use this in my bathtub uh, before I finally found it. But one thing that might, let's uh, we'll do a little test here. Let's see, get a little water on it. Get a little soap. There it is. Oh, you can hear that now. Can just, there you go, see that bubble? That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so that can be hard to spot uh, if you're just looking everywhere. Um, so what I did was I painted it over with a little marker so that I would remember where it is after I identified the problem. Now I'm going to uh, dry this off, clean this off, and uh, the, the patch kit will work much better if it's dry and clean. Now when you buy a sleeping mattress like this, they often come with patch kits. Uh, so luckily, the colors are perfect. You can also use, again, tear aid, uh, gear aid, um, all sorts of things. You can use Aqua Seal. This little bottle of Aqua Seal is handy for all sorts of stuff. But this is what comes with the mattress when you buy it. So let's just go with that. Okay, so let it dry. I've cleaned it. Now it's time to apply the patch, I'm trying to keep my fingerprints off of it. So these do apply better if the pad is not inflated. Uh, you can get a ten, you know, it's less tension and it'll just create a seal. And a lot of times these do take about an hour for these patches for the uh, adhesives to actually connect and bond. So give it some time before you actually now start using it. So a lot of it is like one to two hours, depending on the patch kit that you're using, you might want to give it eight to 12 hours also for all of the molecules to actually bond before they're put under tension. So that is a, a really common thing to do. Now, if you don't happen to have a patch kit with you, um, just from personal experience, I've had to do some odd uh, repairs in the field myself. Uh, one time, the worst one I ever used was a Band-Aid. Uh, and what it did was it slowed down the leak, you know, went from needing to refill every one or two hours to needing to refill every four to six hours, which if that's all you got in the field, then that's what you should use. But obviously, I like to backpack with, you know, some of these patches so that uh, if any problems actually do arise in the field, I've got a real solution in order to solve it. Okay, the last thing that we're gonna talk about here is re-waterproofing your jackets, and uh, then we're gonna wrap this puppy up. All right, let's go check the wash. Oh, hey, we're back. Okay, a lot has happened in that moment of time. I have washed these jackets using, oops, wrong one, using Tech Wash from Nick Wax. What that is, it just removed all the old dirt, the junk, the debris, these are old jackets, and uh, they no longer held their water potency. So giving them a fresh clean really went a long way. And then I ran them through an additional cycle with uh, washing in the TX Direct wash-in, which is for waterproofing, re-waterproofing technical fabrics and things like waterproof jackets. You can use it on tents, uh, like rain flies. You can use it on a lot of gear that you can, if you can throw the material in the wash, that's what this is for. They also have other stuff as well for like spray on or rub in kind of uh, creams. I forgot to get video of water just, just soaking right in. So I apologize, but trust me, these are old jackets and they did not perform any anymore. So now we're going to see if these actually hold up and uh, beat up with water and repel that water away. Here we go. Ooh, look at that sexy water beating up. That is good to see. So that is something that wasn't happening at all uh, before. So in general, gear like this, uh, technical Gore-Tex jackets or hard shells, 
they naturally will just, as you use them, they will lose their water repellency. And that's not a defect of the manufacturer. That is just a nature of how these are treated um, with you know, different types of chemicals and whatnot. Um, so it is a great thing to do to just reapply, re-up your gear um, probably each year if your gear, you know, if you've been owning it for a little while, you can probably get away with it maybe in the second year or the third year. But being able to redo this every year or so is going to go a long way to getting the most out of your gear. So that's it. We've patched sleeping mattresses. We've patched jackets. We have patched backpacks with holes in them. We have uh, re-waterproofed our jackets. There is a lot. There is a lot that I could talk about with this. We could talk about back flushing water filters. We could talk about maintaining stoves. But this is just, that's, it's just too much. So I'm gonna cap it here with this, and maybe I'll do a follow-up video if people are interested in maintaining other gear items. And again, if you have a problem, there's a good chance you can fix it yourself. If you can't, do hit up those companies, reach out to them, or send them an email, look up warranty for a particular company. There's a good chance that they will help you get your gear fixed so that uh, you keep this stuff out of landfills. That's the video, I hope you liked it. If uh, you wanna see anything else, leave it in the comments below, or if you have any comments or questions, again, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and that you're subscribed here at Backpacking TV. Uh, we hope to keep you learning, educated, and inspired here on the channel. I'm Eric Hansen, I'll see you later.